So this year, we're in the new year. Have you made your resolutions? I always have the same resolution. I resolve to evolve. I mean, you can have more specific ones as well, you know, and that's always a good idea. But that resolve to evolve sort of gives that, that foundational peace, you know, that sense that, that spirit is, is our focus and our priority. And then all things follow from there. So if we have that sense of, you know, I'm, I'm going to, more than anything, I'm going to spiritually evolve, that sort of sets the tone for our year. And we can do it today. We're going to talk about clarity and, and being current and being confident as we move into this new year. And we also have a special white stone uh, ceremony for you, as you might have wondered about the little stone you were given as you were coming in. We'll tell you about that a little bit later. So has anybody been to the Unreal Garden yet at One Dome in San Francisco? <laughs> Friendly's the only one. <laughs> so anyway, we went to this a couple nights ago, and um, it's really interesting. It's this technological innovation of gardens that there's eight exhibits, they're art exhibits, and basically the, the basic layout is this um, kind of like waterfalls and, and waterways, and, and like as if you're entering this beautiful garden, right? And then you have these special glasses on. But this is the really, really cool part. I mean, the whole thing is pretty cool, but this is the really cool part. To activate the exhibit, which you know, brings alive these vibrant mushrooms and, and plants and, and even a spirit animal for each one, in order to activate it, you, it gets activated by your energy. I know, right? We love this, our, the spiritual people, right? <laughs> So you point your finger and you actually see a visual of your energy that looks like, you know, like lightning and fire, essentially. And then the, the visual appears. And that's how you go through the exhibit, you know, activating it with your energy. So I love this for a lot of reasons. And that's actually one of the things that appears there early on. Um, and one of the reasons is because it brings the world, you know, the technological evolution, the innovation, the genius of humanity into our spiritual evolution, our spiritual genius, our spiritual evolution. And so, and it is by our intention, our, our desire, our pointedness that we activate what it is that we are ready to see and even step into. I mean, I found myself, even though I knew better, reaching in and touching things, you know, because <laughs> it was just interesting and fun to do that, you know, but it's part of that what we are bringing into the world today, I think, is this marriage of how things are in the world with that heavenly realm, that essence, that innate place within us. And it can be as easy as kind of walking around and pointing with intention of what we want. I want to experience play. And so we bring forth that heaven into earth, that realm of play. Or I want to experience joy or beauty or whatever it is. And that, it, that we recognize that we are always in this or dance with spirit. And so there's always that opportunity that we can actually materialize and manifest that which we are intending. Of course, initially, we want to also be grounded in spirit and have spirit reveal it to us. So in this exhibit, I didn't know what was coming. I mean, I knew there was going to be, because I'd seen pictures, I knew there were going to be some, you know, plants, and I didn't know about the animals and didn't expect the mushrooms or the dancing jellyfish or whatever else <laughs> appeared, you know. So it was also that very much like our dance with spirit, our actual experience with spirit, is we move through this world with a kind of intentionality to say, okay, I'm going to ground in spirit. I'm going to uh, you know, get connected to the presence of God, and then I'm going to bring forth what it is that I'm guided to bring forth. And so there's always that kind of experience of going within and seeing what wants to come and being a little bit surprised by it. And also then getting kind of clear on what we want. Because there is this vast array, you know, our source energy and all the diversity of life is available to us. So it's like there is also this sense that, that this underpinning of spirit, this energy that moves through us and through all of life is kind of waiting for us to say, which way do you want to go? Which way are you pointing? 
which exhibit, if you will, do you want to step into now and experience in your life? Is it the exhibit of joy? Is it the exhibit of playfulness? Is it the exhibit of connection and love? Is it the exhibit of service and divine purpose? We all have that sort of edge, that place within us that is waiting or that we're aware of that is new to be tapping in a new way. In all these areas of life, there's usually one area that there, that's, that's there for us that's saying, okay, time to pay attention to this. Right? Do you ever notice that? <laughs> and then you get a few of them, you feel like they're really in the flow, right? Your relationships are going really well and your work's really going well and but then something health-wise doesn't feel quite right, you know, or, or some array of that. You know, I finally surrendered to that. I think, like, that's just sort of how, how the, you know, how things work is that we're brought, our attention is brought to something new to make it current, to clean it up, to open up the energy once again. And so when we can kind of let go and stop, like, wanting well, everything to be perfect all the time and instead recognize that, yeah, Darn it, right, Joanne? <laughs> it's over there going like this. <laughs> so all the perfectionists in the room begin to have a little, <laughs> a little temper tantrum, right? <laughs> I, I'm only joking because I can relate. <laughs> so, but but that that idea that we that we get clear, that we get intentional, is really is really the key here. And then when we don't know really, you know, where to point one of the things we can do is go within and, and some self-inquiry. You know, what matters to me the most? What, what is, or who, or how do I want to serve the most? Or what is kind of knocking on the door of my heart to, to bring forth right now, to pay attention to? Which brings us into current, because being current is where we pay our attention, what we pay attention to. Clarity is the intention. Currency is the attention. We're in the currency or the flow of spirit, the present moment, and we get clear on what is here for us. You know, what, want, what needs our attention? What wants our attention? And then these two sort of dance together, intention and attention. We begin to give our attention to that which we have pointed to, that which we have said, I'm going in that direction, I'm opening this realm up, I'm stepping into this realm. And we begin to then give our attention to that, then we're in that currency, in that flow of spirit, in that conscious awareness. So sometimes in our world, being current is like feeling like there's a hundred different directions that are demanding our attention at the same time. Did you ever notice that before? Just on the plane coming back home last week, I noticed, I was just looking around and noticing everybody with their devices, you know, and the guy next to me, he was just passionately, you know, texting before we had to take off and he had to turn his, and there were paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs, you know, and he was just, you know, going so fast. And I thought, wow, what is it that he's communicating that is so like absorbing and so got to, got to get it out. And then I looked across the aisle and there was another guy there and he was scrolling through and he was, you know, playing videos and he was, I don't know what all he was looking at, Facebook and email, but it was back and forth and all these things were popping up, you know. I thought, wow, we just have our attention in so many areas. You know, and all around it felt like that. And then I looked at the woman across the aisle next to me and she was reading a book. And I was like, oh my gosh, how old school. <laughs> <laughs> and she looked pretty peaceful, actually. You know, she had her legs crossed, she was leaning back a little bit, and she was just reading her book. You know, but it's the things we choose, right? And in a way, it's also making friends with, this is our world. You know, this is our world. This is how it works now. The digital natives, a new generation that has come in, this is how their brains work. You know, there's lots of stuff firing at once. It doesn't mean that we don't want to be grounded in spirit, but there's a recognition that maybe we can marry the two. You know, maybe like the technological evolution and the spiritual evolution that I was experiencing at the same time in this exhibit can be together rather than a push against. 
So, you know, I, I was reading an article in Psychology Today that was talking about the changing world of therapy. And the therapist said that it used to be that the therapist's role was to sit and to listen, right? But he said in today's therapy, people want a back and forth. They want this like firing dialogue. They want advice. They want direction. He said one young woman said to him, please help me speak more slowly because I can't hear myself or you. Wow, right? So it's that, that constant, like, out, 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 outside <laughs> that we need to kind of rein in a little bit of that, recognizing, too, that this is kind of how we move about the world now to some degree. So there's some fine line there, and I'm not even sure what to recommend at this point because it's coming out just right now in this moment. <laughs> but there's some kind of um, happy medium there that th those two things can flow together. Um, so let's just kind of explore that together this year as, as it's coming forth. So, so getting current is about putting our attention on our intention, but it's also about being in the current of spirit and there's another piece to it that sometimes we think something that we haven't been paying attention to, that it's not current. But the truth is that we have feelings about it and we have blocks currently up around it. For example, my niece says that she hasn't um, been having this conversation with her boyfriend that she really needs to have, you know, one of those real heart to heart. She said, it's been going on for about six months that she's known she really needs to have this conversation. But she doesn't have it because, you know, a zillion reasons why you can say you're too busy and blah, blah, blah. But of course, it's current because there are feelings there and unresolved conversation and big decisions that need to be made for them. And so she's putting it off, which is blocking the energy and so it's like, it, it is there, it is current, it is wanting attention. Do you have anything like that in your life? You know, maybe it's about getting your affairs in order. I keep thinking about that myself. Like, I need to get my affairs in order, you know, in terms of just finances and health directives and those kinds of things that I've been putting off. And so it's even those kinds of basic things. You know, it's like, it's there. You know it's there. It's like sort of a back burner kind of thought that keeps spinning around there. And so it is current. And once we give our attention to what is current, we open up so much energy. Once we take care of those things that need to be taken care of, have the hard conversations that need to happen to bring our relationships current. Because if our relationships aren't current, then they're not at their best. They're not blessed by that ongoing flow of abundant good and love and connection that spirit wants to flow through us heart to heart and soul to soul. And so where are those places that you need to get current, that you need to bring that presence of spirit, that ease, that flow, and that freedom? Consider those things as we sort of pay attention and get intentional and also kind of clean up whatever else needs to be cleaned up to free up our energy in this new year. These are, it's good work that we do, you know, and I like that we have this, this sort of bigness around the new year changing and a time of reflection because it gets us to, to start to focus on what it is that we want to intend and then to bring that currency, that energy, that flow so that things can move in the directions that we want them to move and we ourselves can embody that which we want to embody, that which we have come here actually to embody. You know, sometimes it takes st tough stuff to happen in our lives before we get real, <laughs> you know, about the things that need our attention. Did you ever notice that? People will wait until, you know, end of life or serious illness or other things before they'll say, I forgive you or I'm sorry or I need to clean this up or complete this or that. Why wait? Because you know when we wait, we're stopping the good. When we wait, we're stopping up the flow of abundant good that Spirit wants to share with us. And so there's no need to wait. <laughs> now is now. <laughs> now is the current moment. Now is the presence of the present that is being offered us. So um, anybody see Bohemian Rhapsody? Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, I knew the 11.30 would come through. <laughs> I was all alone up here at 9.30. <laughs> not that I don't love the 9.30, folks. I did not mean to indicate that. I'm all about the contemplation, too. But, you know, in um, Bohemian Rhapsody, which is about uh, the group Queen, headed by Freddie Mercury, who is the lead singer, in it, um, Freddie, at some point, develops AIDS, and it's during the be very beginnings of the AIDS crisis. You know, so things are getting really real. <laughs> and the band's just, they had a little break, and they're getting back together. And this is what he says to his band. Please, if any of you fuss about it, or frown about it, if you bore me with your sympathy, that's just seconds wasted. Seconds wasted that could be used for making music because you're all I want to do with the time I have left. I don't have to be their victim, their AIDS poster boy, their cautionary tale. I decide who I am. I'm going to be what I was born to be a performer, to give the people what they want. Go to the heavens, Freddie Mercury. Yeah, so it's just that kind of embrace of, this is who I am, this is why I came. You know, Jesus said, I came to testify to the truth. You know, what truth are you testifying to? What is the truth that you want to embody? What's the legacy you want to live? How do you want people to talk about you when your time comes? How do you want, what do you want to give? What gift do you want to leave behind? This is the time to think about those things. Why not now? Why not now? Why wait? So who is it that I am and how can I bring that forth more fully? What's standing in my way? to make things more current, more present, more flow. And, and to address those things then allows us to be who we've come to be, to embody our divine purpose and to really live it and to be it. You know, you may feel this sense of time's running out, kind of like Freddie did for various reasons. Maybe you're having a midlife or a late life crisis. You know, in Chinese though, the word crisis, you know, it really means opportunity. And so it's opportunity for us to reassess. It's an opportunity for us to look again, to see where our life is, where we stand, who we are, how, you know, and, and also to celebrate. You know, it's not always about becoming in a way that we're not uh, celebrating just who, exactly who we are, because you are perfect and whole exactly how you are. You know, in our new teachings, I think a lot of times we're driving for the becoming, for the, for the wholeness and the truth of who we are, but there's also sort of, wow, you know, life is pretty fabulous, and I'm showing up pretty fabulously in all these different arenas. So giving yourself some of that energy as well, being, you know, being grateful for who you are and how you are in your life, there's a lot to be said for that as well. And then we also just have this natural kind of thing to evolve, don't we? That little constant nudge to evolve further into who we are, to reveal further the fullness of who we are. And that's really what today is all about in our white stone as we come up with our guiding word and we'll take you through a process for that to guide you through the year. So clarity in the now helps us whittle down to the essence of, of what it is or who we are and how we want to be and how we want to show up and what we want to do with our lives. If we just kind of, if you took some how-to steps here, you just say, you know, breathe into the now. <laughs> Breathe into this moment, into spirit, and then set your intention and give it over to spirit. And then put your attention through your days on that intention and on spirit. And watch how those things dance and reveal and open up in your life. When we are clear and we are plugged into the currency of spirit, there is a natural kind of confidence that comes out of that. There is a natural kind of confidence when we have a sense of clarity of who we are and where we're going, what direction we've intended, we've pointed, what we're opening up, what realm we're stepping into. There is a, 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 there is a story about a boy who um, loved to walk in the woods because part of this is really just about doing and being and embodying what you love. 
You know, that's one of the great guiding questions. Just what do I love? What do I love to do? What do I love to experience? What do I love to, to be in the world? It's that simple, really, to move toward and to bring toward us what we love. Because it's there that we shine the most. So the boy was just simply doing what children do. He was walking through the woods because he loves to walk through the woods. You know, the rest of us are like, oh, I gotta make time to walk through the woods. It's like, no, you just walk through the woods because you like to. <laughs> And so the boy is walking through the woods, being his natural self, enjoying his walk, and along he comes up to an owl, a white owl, and the owl's leg is caught under a branch. And the owl says to the boy, would you free me? Would you free my leg from the branch? If you do, I'll give you a gift. And so the boy says, of course I'll free you, and he lifts up the branch and the owl flies away. And so the boy continues on his walk and he comes to a cow. And the cow says, hello, boy. And the, cow, and the boy says, hello, cow. And he says, how are you doing today? The cow says to the boy. And the boy says, well, I'm doing quite fine. I just freed an owl from a branch. And she said that I would, she would give me a gift. He said, do you suppose she's given me the gift to be able to talk to animals? And the cow said, well, didn't you say that she asked you first to free your, uh, her foot? And he says, yes. And he says, well, she must have given you a different gift then. And with that, the boy flew away. <laughs> and with that, we turn to our white stone, the gift for us for this year. So I want to guide you through a process. We're going to have some, some music and some guided meditation. And I want to just, I know some people sometimes like to pre-plan and come with their thing already. And so I just want to give you uh, encouragement just to let it all go and let's let go through the process and let spirit guide you um, in, in what your word will be. Today as I stand open to divinity choose my this time, Roman prisoners were given a white stone when they were freed, a mark of freedom. And this talisman for you is a symbol of freedom, of clarity, of staying current and confident in the new year, letting go whatever lack or limitation we've now let go of and now free with our white stone. We begin to move toward that which we want to be. It's based on the scripture from Revelation 2.17. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what Spirit is saying to the churches. To everyone who conquers, in other words, overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna, and I will give a white stone, and on that white stone is written a new name that no one knows except the one who receives it. And so today, right now, with you in spirit, there is a secret being revealed, a word, a new name, hidden manna, spiritual food for you for the year. And you will feast again and again and again on this guiding word, this intention. It will teach you through the year of who you are and who you are revealing yourself to be to yourself, to the world. So receiving now this hidden manna, 
because you truly are the one who overcomes all obstacles. Anything that stands in your way is easily dissolved when you are working in co-creative action with spirit. You are given the gift of spiritual food, of hidden manna. You are given the gift of this talisman, this marker, this white stone, this clear, clean slate. And on this white stone comes forth a word in your mind's eye, in your heart of hearts, straight from the divine to your conscious recognition. A spiritual quality to guide you through the year, love or peace or joy, truth or kindness. It's yours and yours alone. And so rest now in the silence and see what comes. And when you have received your word, don't rush it, but allow it to materialize and to write on that stone your spiritual quality, your guiding word, your new name that Spirit has given you. I write this name on a white stone stone that means both purity and truth. In her wisdom, silent strength, my name expresses God in me. On this white stone, on this white stone, So I encourage you to keep this visible and tactile for yourself throughout the year, maybe on your altar or in your pocket or on your dresser, wherever you'll see it frequently and be reminded again and again of this time when spirit revealed to you the intention for your year, for what it is that you're revealing in a whole new way about yourself. And to keep it sacred, you know, something that either is secret between you and spirit or just checking in and seeing how you might want to share it or how much you want to share it. Letting that be your experience. As you embody this new gift, this new word, this new way of being, a kind of confidence shines forth through you and knowing a faith that you move through the world. And so you can point your direction, point your energy in the direction of your new word as you embody it, as you move about the world, pointing and allowing the clarity to come forth, keeping your attention on your intention and knowing that the divine, different aspects of the divine are being revealed to you. Like the boy in the forest, you've been given great gifts. Now it's your time to fly. So let's close out with that favorite affirmation, both I resolve to evolve, but also embodying our new word. So if you're not ready to claim it out loud, you can just claim that, that word inside your own heart, or you can go ahead and claim it out strong, I am, whatever that word is, um, and I resolve to evolve. Let's close out with this knowing. I am... I resolve to evolve. So it is. Happy New Year. <laughs>